How come you like different things than I like? What's the reasoning? So I've noticed an ongoing trend when it comes to comparing different smartphones this year. And I've almost found like kind of the formula for arguing with an Apple sheep. And I think it really comes down to what features do people care about the most. And if a phone has that feature, then it's a useful feature. And if that phone has features you don't care about, it is therefore a gimmick. And then you kind of decide which team you are based on which features make the most sense to you. Now, I think I can defend some of the features that Apple chooses to go with, especially when it comes to the iPhone and compare it to that of the features people choose of the Google Pixel 2. That is kind of the most up in the air question right now. I get a lot of hate for that. I get a lot of support for that, but I think it's worth comparing a few of these features and deciding, hey, why is this important to me? And the other side is, why is this important to you? I legitimately like to know. So first off, Google Pixel owners have made it apparent that they care about having a fingerprint reader. Apple has shown that they really appreciate this feature because they kind of introduced it to the masses with the iPhone 5S. It's called Touch ID. But they now think because they wanted that edge to edge display, instead of putting Touch ID on the back, they thought it would be smarter to create a new way of logging into your phone that is more secure and more reliable with Face ID, which seemed to be kind of the butt end of the joke with a lot of iPhone 10 hate. People calling it the $1,000 emoji machine, whereas the Pixel carries on the tradition of using the fingerprint reader. I think both companies are making an effort to make bezels smaller, as that seems to be the more recent market trend. Most customers are showing an interest in phones with smaller smaller bezels. What I find very interesting is the differentiating way between Apple removing them and Google removing them. See, with the least amount of bias possible, I think it's safe to say that the Google Pixel method of removing bezels is not that original. It may be nice, and you perhaps like the design of it, but it's been done many times this year just by making the chin and forehead slightly smaller, but they're still there and having very thin side bezels. Whereas the iPhone 10 obviously, did take the move of removing as much bezels as possible, but it did it in a different way. Instead of having a slightly smaller chin and forehead in really thin side bezels, it decided to have an equal sized bezel all the way around and just have a notch cut out at the top. The closest design element this goes with is the essential phone, but even that had a bit of a chin at the bottom. So I would say that the iPhone 10 has the more unique approach, but a lot of people are not for the notch. A lot of people prefer the design element of the Pixel 2, which goes along with the S8 and the LG V30. But I've heard a lot of people actually say they like the notch, which I kind of had a hard time believing because it seems kind of intrusive, but I'm anticipating that it will be fairly easy to ignore it once you get used to it. And sometimes a lot of people say that black bar is gonna bug me like crazy when I'm watching movies and stuff without addressing the fact that you can double tap on most media content and the notch will go away. In fact, there's a lot of situations, like if you're watching a 16 by nine video where the notch will not show up at all. In fact, I think in most landscape options, the notch will be fairly hard to notice. And when you're using it in portrait mode, the top part of your phone is usually black anyway. So this is really just highlighting your wallpaper a little bit further. Obviously it'd be really cool if it wasn't there, but the technology's not there yet. Both Pixel and the iPhone 10 agree that the headphone jack is no longer necessary. However, Apple agrees that headphones should be included with the purchase, which I tend to think is more useful because I like having headphones. And I think if you're buying a device that consumes a lot of media and you're used to listening to music, including headphones is a really great bonus to that. Whereas the Pixel team seems to think that charging fast is a more important feature. As a lot of people have mentioned, the Google Pixel has fast charging, but the Apple iPhone does not ship with it, though it does have that option if you want to pay extra. Now, personally, maybe it's just in my experience, I don't run into a lot of problems where I need to charge my phone quickly. And of course, if you do, that's still an option on the iPhone 10, but I don't think it's a huge deal breaker to not have it included. See, in my life, at least, I don't know how you guys live, but in my life, there's not a ton of times where I'm in a hurry and I need to get somewhere fast. And for some reason, my phone battery has been completely drained. I use my phone a lot and I use it throughout the day. And perhaps it's because of the A11 Bionic chip being really, really good at conserving power while on standby time. Time. Perhaps that's why my iPhone battery never goes that low, but I simply haven't run into a lot of occasions where fast charging would make life easier. Perhaps Android users, I don't know if your phone's battery is different or you use your phone like crazy before the end of the day, which to me more sounds like you have a bad battery. Perhaps it would be useful to have fast charging in the middle of the day so it could charge fast and then you could leave. But for me, when I start wirelessly charging my phone, I'm about to go to bed or I'm doing something else and I just drop it on the plate. That's why including fast charging for me is not really that big of a deal. And why the feature of including
including headphones to me makes more sense. It's more logical and people would use that more. Lots of people watch videos. Lots of people listen to music via headphones on their phone. So I think that's a more common scenario than people running out of battery before the end of the day, at least in my experience. It could be different from person to person. Which also brings up the topic of wireless charging. No, it's not necessarily something I think every single person needs to use because obviously not all of our tech can support it yet. My iPad cannot wirelessly charge. My MacBook cannot wirelessly charge. And we have such a pre-existing infrastructure of cables and power plugs that it makes sense for people to go place to place and already plug their phone in. But I do think that wireless charging is going to be the future. Yes, it still requires a pad and a cable to plug in. But as we're seeing some of these companies develop their wireless charging further, we're finding out that the iPhone 8 and 10 are both compatible with this Pi company, which is capable of wirelessly charging your phone padless from about a foot away, which isn't very far, but I like to think of the future. And I'm thinking that down the road, if you have a two-year-old iPhone 8 or 10, it perhaps could still support wireless charging from an even greater distance if we get this technology right. So for me, adding wireless charging is more future-proofing and also getting yourself ready for a portless future. Whereas I'm kind of confused by Google Pixel's idea to not go with it. Like I said at the beginning, when you have a phone that lacks certain features, typically the counter argument is to just say it's not important. I would just like to argue that I think it is. And Google has clearly proven that they're not really a team of their word, given that last year they seemed to think the headphone jack was pretty important. This year they don't, and I can anticipate perhaps a dual camera and wireless charging may not seem important this year, but perhaps next year they will. This year the Pixel team is going to run into, however, is their iconic look, their iconic design for all of their tech is based upon having part of the back be glass, typically the upper quadrant. But when you do that on a Google Pixel, you kind of make activating Qi wireless charging very difficult because typically when you're wirelessly charging your iPhone or Galaxy phone, you rest the phone in the middle. That's where the wireless charging plate is. The fact that they put the glass on the upper part of the Pixel means that if they want the Pixel 3 or whatever it's going to be called to support wireless charging, they're going to have to change their iconic look of the phone or just insist that wireless charging is not that important, even though the two largest, most popular smartphone developers out there are using it. And there's Qi chargers going in Starbucks stations. And tons and tons of people are going to be using it a lot more over the next year. Google could decide to be the rebel and just say, no, we refuse. It's not useful and we want our aluminum backs. They can do that, but I've noticed that Android fan base suddenly doesn't think it's very important. You know, before I noticed them complaining a lot that the Apple iPhone didn't have wireless charging, now that it does and the Pixel doesn't, a lot of the conversation is now flipped to say, you know, it's not that useful. Who needs it? See, this is how you win your arguments. If I don't have the feature, it's not useful. Then we get into cameras. See, this is kind of an interesting one. The Google Pixel team can still do great bokeh effects and make portrait shots look cool on both the front and rear facing cameras, but they don't think they need a dual camera, even though I continually have stated on this channel that I don't think the only reason to have a dual camera is for portrait shots. All photographers will admit that it's nice to have variating angles compared to a fixed lens that's a wide angle. You're kind of a lot more limited compared to being able to zoom and enhance with that same photo quality on a more cropped in shot. In fact, I think it makes the ring of focus look a lot more real because typically when you're getting those portrait shots that we all love that have been on the iPhone 7 Plus for a year, I think they look more legit when the telephoto lens is zoomed in because that's more of what DSLR used compared to the pixel method of saying everything can be from one angle. You don't need to zoom in. We can blur the background with machine learning, which I'll admit is cool, but it's not something that's never been done before. There's been portrait shots on single lens cameras for a long time. But you know what? I'm not going to be afraid to admit some of the pixel strengths. And I have to admit that it's pretty cool that they can activate that machine learning portrait mode on both the front and rear facing cameras. And I do think they did a good job with that. I'm impressed that they can do that. And I'll admit, I'm probably a little jealous that my iPhone 8 can't do that. Being able to take portrait mode photos on the front facing camera is really impressive. So yes, I'm an Apple sheep and yes, I'm biased, but I'm not afraid to admit that the Pixel, if it does have a worthy feature, I'm going to give credit to it. And for that, that's the biggest one for me. I'd also like to give it credit for being a tad more affordable than the Galaxy Note 8 and iPhone 10, while still providing a lot of the features that the iPhone 10 parallels. But overall, I want my fan base to keep in mind that typically we kind of do the same exact thing our competition does. So for the most common defense rants I've seen with the Google Pixel or for Android in general, iPhone has portrait mode, iPhone has dual camera, who cares? It's not that useful. We have fast charging. The iPhone doesn't. Therefore, it is a bad product because it is lacking a feature that my phone has. It's kind of basic and it's kind of an easy way to look at comparing phones, but we do the same thing. I think wireless charging is nice. I think exclusivity with iOS and having AirDrop and Apple Watch and AirPods, that's nice and I appreciate it. Those features matter to me, whereas the competition says, eh, smartwatches are a fad. AirPods look dumb. You don't need them. And why don't you just plug in your phone? You don't need AirDrop. I'm just saying that seems more complicated. I like having my tech ecosystem work together. Those features are important 
important to me, whereas Fandroids would say, that's dumb, you don't need to buy all of that crap. You can have a diverse ecosystem that is still effective. So I hope you can pick up on that on today's like controversial debates between Pixel and iPhone. What it really boils down to is differentiating features that people deem more worthy. And to me, being part of this Apple ecosystem where everything works together seamlessly is more important. And the Fandroids have, you know, fast charging and customization and they have the Pixel. <laughs> which is the it, it has front facing speakers that's nice Good for them. I'll admit, front-facing speakers probably do sound better, so congratulations, you got that. But just keep in mind, people live different lives, people have different needs for their phone, and perhaps those differentiating features is why people will choose one or the other. That's why we think differently. Which is totally fine. In fact, I'm very glad that Apple takes more original approaches and doesn't just duplicate what Android did already. I'm glad they do things differently. And I don't expect all Google fans out there to love it. You don't have to. You have a phone that's right for you. And we can all be grateful that there's quite a lot of good smartphone options out there. I still think a lot of the features the Pixel team chooses is not very justified and a lot of the features they list are very useful and are likely available on a different Android phone for a better price like the Galaxy S8. But who am I to say what you want? Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here and I will see you in the next one.